Hi everyone, Simon Keeling here. It is Friday the 5th of October. Thanks for watching weatherweb.net. Of course, the sites get free of charge by the adverts you see around the screen here. So uh, when you come along and you use the adverts and you click on the adverts or you look at the adverts, that's what generates revenue for us. So thank you for that because it's that that keeps the site completely free of charge. Not a bad weekend ahead. Um, I'll show the details in just a moment. But um, got some interesting charts just coming up uh, right now from the... Um, from the ensemble model. This is the Arctic Oscillation, and this is a model. This is, uh, sorry, a, a chart that we use quite frequently through the winter months. So we're just coming into the start of this at the moment. Now, the Arctic Oscillation Index um, tends to be these two bottom charts that we use. The the Arctic Oscillation Index tells us um, how strong the winds are around the North Pole, and what we find is that when the winds are strong, circulate in the pole. Um, that tends to hold the cold air up at the uh, up at the North Pole, so it doesn't tend to drain south. But when they go into when it goes negative, that means that the winds surrounding the pole tend to be lighter, and that allows the cold air to kind of drain southwards into the main land masses. And it's just quite interesting to note. Look on the 10 and 14 day forecasts here. You've got two sections of these forecasts, by the way. I should just explain this. We've got a red line at the top and the bottom. Those are the outliers of the ensemble model. The blue line running through here is the um, mean so that's what we look for and the black line is the actual so that's actually what's happened so it gives you an idea as to how close the forecast was to uh, what actually happened you can see here look for example it's way off so the forecast was inaccurate but it's quite interesting to monitor and to see what uh, what shapes up from this and you can see here look over the 10 day forecast look it's starting to slip into negative territory now it's only weekly negative so, um, you know, we're not talking about huge negative figures, it's any weekly ne negative, and the correlations actually at the moment are fairly low. Um, but there is just that indication of cooler air starting to build now to the north and it being able to drain south, and that's sort of what we've seen potentially for the uh, for the back end of next weekend. Um, you can pick it up on the, uh, on the ensemble models as well as on the uh, 8 to 10 day means. This is the 8 to 10 day mean. Um, of the 500 millibar flow. We've got the ECMWF on the left here, GFS on the right, and this is for the period from next Friday till uh, Monday the 15th. And just interesting to note, look at this high building out towards the west. This is the ridge that's going to be nudging the flow more back into a, into a north or northwesterly, bringing some cooler conditions. And that trough look just being squeezed out towards the east. Now, that has all the mar all the hallmarks, and I've been saying this, haven't I, about high pressure building and, and low pressure getting into Europe. That's got all the hallmarks of that being squeezed out and being able to develop somewhere in here, which would mean that our high wouldn't be to the north, it would be to the northwest, but it would still bring cooler, drier conditions to much of the country, although the south and the southeast could well be seeing rain kind of in this middle part of October period. So I'm still sitting with that forecast idea just at the moment. Um, if I show the ensemble forecast, these go forward in 12 hour steps. So this is the analysis from midnight last night. Look, if we just knock it forward, you'll notice what happens. High pressure comes in during the course of this weekend. This middle of down Sunday, low pressure out towards the west. There's the uh, high pressure on Sunday. Next week, fairly autumnal. We've got low pressure close by, but look, we've got high pressure to the, to the north. And those of you who've been watching the videos will know that I've been saying that I thought high pressure would build to the north with low pressure to the south. Now it's not exactly where I thought it was going to be but certainly the pattern is there and the models didn't predict this so this is this is a case for experience and looking at the models and getting a feel for how these things develop. Certainly it does back up the idea of a human forecaster still being needed in there somewhere but notice how look the high is there to the north here's, here's Tuesday look the low is to the south now I think in this zone through Ireland Wales southern parts of England is going to be really autumnal through Monday Tuesday Wednesday with drizzle and mist and the leaves changing colour it really is going to be looking quite autumnal but up towards the north we'll have uh, brighter conditions now the ensemble shows the high look the ridge here you can see the ridge there in the 500 millibar flow sort of nudging its way towards the east with a high building its way eastwards but this trough coming into the west look now what's interesting is just keep your eye on this ridge out here because this is getting a feed of warm air coming off the eastern coast of the states notice that ridge build and look the northerly wind can get southwards through the country during next weekend so this is a hint of temperatures falling off during next weekend now the model wants to to not keep those conditions around for very long but again i build my suspicion look of this southerly pump building the ridge 
out towards the west of the country. Now the Arctic Oscillation Forecast predicts that this area up here we get weaker winds. So this would allow the ridge to be building further north. We get a cold plunge coming down here through Europe and the effect of this would be to build low pressure to the south. So I'm still kind of go for this idea of pressure being higher to the north than to the south with the south being more unsettled in the middle part of October the north being dry and frosty it may happen it may not we'll wait and see it's going to be very interesting to see the Japanese output for their their latest output for the month ahead that comes out later on just to see what the details of that are but interesting to see this cooler plunge coming in during the course of next weekend but notice how it doesn't last very long look because into the new week the the model builds the high through but then he does try to get us back into the westerlies again although I have to say that this latest run certainly holds on to the high more than the previous run did and it's making more of this trough building through Europe so the, the kind of signals are there the models seeing what I want I, I want them to see so there is a hint there that this could well happen let's get some detail on the next few hours though for you because that's obviously further ahead so this is the forecast from seven o'clock this morning uh, let's take it through to this afternoon here's the rain affecting the channel just at the moment we've got much brighter skies to the north a few showers for northern western coasts overnight tonight well we're going to find some more heavy rain moving its way across southern england look during the course of tonight really some quite hefty bursts of rain affecting southern parts of england very autumnal with that rain as well clearer skies to the north touch of ground frost across central scotland central parts of northern england generally it is going to be dry for saturday morning quite a wet start to the southeast of the country heavy bursts of rain around but they'll be clearing away southeastwards and then many areas just become dry and fine through the day one or two showers clipping northern and western coast of scotland and the north and northern ireland but generally a fair day a cool day with plenty of sunshine and the light northwest breeze and eventually the rain clearing away from southern coasts as well Overnight to Sunday could be quite a cold one. Um, got that ridge of high pressure building through. Look, I think a, a ground frost from the Midlands northwards could even be a touch of air frost across central Scotland and northern England. I think down to the south, high cloud trying to get in. That just keeps temperatures above freezing. So we twos and threes typically further south. Then through Sunday, well, we find some outbreaks of rain coming into the southwest. We've got high pressure still over us. So generally it's a fine day again with some good spells of sunshine. One or two morning mist and fog patches clearing away quickly. But it looks like being a fine day, although cloud and rain coming into the southwest later. Now, um, those of you who uh, are going to go flying, well, it looks like it is going to be a fine day on Saturday away from the south. And looks fine too through Saturday as well. So uh, if flying is a thing, it's a great weekend. Sailing not too bad either. And there's a sailing forecast exclusively for us. Uh, Sailing Weather Information Service subscribers at sailingweather.co.uk. Um, anyway, so the rain comes into the southwest during the course of Sunday afternoon. Now that edges its way north and eastwards during uh, Sunday night into Monday. Brings quite a wet day, I think, through Ireland, Wales, and southern parts of England. It's going to be a damp, murky, misty day. The Midlands, Wales, southwest England, northwest England, and Ireland. I think a little bit drier further east, and probably some cloud here. Um, best of the sunshine up towards Scotland. Looks as if that condition holds through uh, Tuesday too. High pressure look up to the north again. Still cloud and rain uh, across southern Ireland, across uh, Wales, southern parts of England as well. Misty murky as well. Could be some fog patches further north but some good spells of sunshine developing. Heading into Wednesday, we've got similar conditions taking place once again through Wednesday with a high pressure tending to hold on towards the north before slipping its way eastwards during the course of the day. Not convinced this is exactly going to happen. I think it'll be more of a southeasterly flow. I think southeast England, northern England, Scotland probably having a fair day, broken clouds, some sunny spells, but always mist and low cloud across southwestern parts of England, Wales, the Midlands, and Ireland as well. And then into the back end of next week, well, there's the high look trying to slip away towards the east. I think still autumnal conditions down to the south and west although perhaps becoming quite warm in these areas as the southerly flow kicks in more properly and then we kind of take this flip across look into this northerly by the time we're getting into saturday and sunday of next week so we need to look uh, at what i thought was going to happen as we head in towards the middle part of the month so lots of information there for you uh, thanks again for watching as i said the sites get free of charge by the outfits you see around the screen so please do keep coming back and uh, viewing the, uh, the service regularly. Thanks for watching weatherweb.net and keep the sun shining. Bye for now.